Pete Paschal here with Mashable. I'm speaking with Brian David Johnson, who is Intel's futurist. This guy's full-time job is to think about the future and what people are going to be doing and how they're going to be interacting with technology. Brian, you have a companion today. I do. Who is this? What's going on? So this is Jimmy, and Jimmy is a 21st century robot. And it's to kind of imagine what the next step in robotics looks like. And so we're launching this project with a book called 21st Century Robot, but we're inviting everybody to come together and help us imagine what the future of robots could be. I mean, you say like, you know, you can have a 3D printer, you can design your own, or the designs for Jimmy, are those publicly out there? And like, you can, I can just print this and throw in the brain and... Yep. We, we, we sort of joking that, that robots, designing a robot isn't hard, it's three easy steps. So the first one is go to robots21.com, download the book. So again, the book, it's, it's free, it's really open source. We've only written half of the book. I'm actually looking for other people to give me their ideas and we'll give them credit and actually put them in the book. So it's been simplified because of 3D printing, because of the ability to really custom fit. Like if you 3D print the inside skeleton of Jimmy, you can easily just snap a servo in. You don't have to do all the fine tooling like you used to do. The projects are made for a really smart 13 year old. We wanted to make sure that we're pretty much everybody else, right? right? So that really like a high school student could go and do this, at least at a base level, and then people can mod it as much as they want. Where does this kind of stand on this like, you know, large continuum of, you know, personal robots, I guess? Where robots before were, it was something over there, or something that when it had only one task or was an industrial robot, we said, wow, we'd actually created personal robots, like robots that were personally created by people. And then we had 3D printing, and 3D printing changed everything, because now you can design your own robot and print it, you can print the exoskeleton. And so the idea is that we want people to come together and do open source design of robots. So you can design whatever you want your robot to be, but also the AI and the software is open source and it's app based. So you can write apps and then download apps onto your robot. You can kind of think of him like a smartphone. Powered by an Intel chip, I assume. It could be. We're not actually thinking about that yet. I mean, it's possible. I mean, Intel, certainly we announced our Quark platform, which is one of our smallest ever platforms. But right now, we're more interested in what's the social interaction. So what does it look like when you can turn anything into a computer? What does it look like to live in a world of the Internet of Things? One of the base sort of parts of our manifesto is also it is completely open source. So we're pushing people to say, come up with something awesome, whether it's a physical design of Jimmy, or whether it's a mod to his AI, or a mod to his body, or even an app, and then share it. I think for the longest time, robots have been contained. They were made by one person or sort of one company. And I think that's silly. I mean, in the world of, of Mashable, in the world of the internet and social media, why would you have just one person or one company building a robot? It seems very silly. Why not have you come up with a great idea, put it out, and then I can pull it down, riff on your cool idea, and put it out there. We're really trying to create this platform. I mean, Jimmy and the 21st Century Robots really are kind of a new platform for robotics that move us from innovation and imagination into the real world using all these great new makers, using all the great new um, technologies, but then allows it to kind of freeform, go back and forth, it's, and it's fiercely social. So I used a, a bunch of joints in by doing the embellishment. So if this goes where um, we'd like it to go, like where, where is Jimmy 10, 20 years from now? I think that we start to have as many people imagining, designing, and building robots as possible. That robots become a part of our lives just like our smartphones and our computers and our TVs are. That robots become a meaningful social interaction. I mean, one of the, the I think, really early applications for somebody like Jimmy could be in healthcare. So I don't know if, if you have an elderly parent or somebody in your family, but it can be a lot of burden. There's a lot of work you have to do, even just down to basic things like getting them to remember to take their medication. So sometimes maybe you will give them a call, or sometimes you could even put a reminder on their tablet or on their smartphone. But imagine having Jimmy in the house, and all Jimmy has to do is walk over to Grandma and say, hey, Grandma, it's time to take your diabetes medication, and then walk away. I mean, it's a much more human way. It's a much more social, social relationship way of understanding how we could live with technologies.